everybody, it's Aisa for Us Naturals and today we are going to be making a shea butter mix and I will not be using any heat so this will be a heat free version of shea butter. This is not my first time making shea butter. Uh, my very first video was so long that I actually had to split it up and make it into two videos. But I've gotten a little bit better at this. I perfected it just a little bit more so I should be able to fit it all on one, <laughs> one video. Uh, this particular version is not for me. It is for my boyfriend's friend's mother. She's recently gone through chemotherapy and lost her hair, so she's natural now. Her hair is very short, and she doesn't believe it can grow. I've assured her that it can, and I'm going to be making her a couple of products, and shea butter is the first. All right. So let's go. I'm in the kitchen, and this section of the table is dedicated to my, uh, the scientist in me with all my little hair products. I have uh, here a beater and a teaspoon and a tablespoon measure. I got some uh, little droppers, if I can get it out with one hand, uh, for some of the uh, little essential oils I might be adding. Got some coconut oil, some olive oil, some aloe vera juice, and this handy dandy little container I'm going to be making everything in. Right, so I've removed the lid and I'll go over here and grab my shea butter. And I get my shea butter from Shea Essentials. It's a coupon code in my video. I'll post it for you guys. I'm not sure exactly how much I'm going to make. I usually wind up making too much, but this time I'm going to try to watch it with, uh, with adding too many extra things to it because I think it makes it just a little bit less effective. So I'm just adding a couple of chunks. I hope you guys can see that. Yeah. I think that ought to be enough. My hands are nice and greasy now. And what I'd like to do with that is go on ahead and start adding a couple of oils. Uh, jojoba oil is always an awesome thing. You do a tablespoon of jojoba. Alright. I'm going to do a tablespoon of olive. some extra virgin olive oil and next I'll try some coconut I'll put that to the side since the cocoa butter I mean the coconut oil might be a little trickier to pour out from the shape of the bottle and give me some of that in there And just recently, I started adding additional things that I hadn't in the past, uh, such as glycerin. Now, I'm only going to use a teaspoon of glycerin, just because I'm not sure if this is one of the things that began to make it ineffective. Like I said, um, the last shea butter batch that I actually made I had to go back and add more shea butter to it just because it didn't seem to be sealing my hair, which probably means that I overpowered the shea butter a little bit too much. So that's what I'm trying not to do this time. A tablespoon of aloe vera juice. And that'll probably be the only liquid that, full-on liquid that's not an oil that I'll be putting in there. And it looks like I spilled some on the table, so I'm going to go ahead and get a couple more drips inside there. And I got some really cool essential oils. Uh, first, I do not want to forget, I'm going to add vitamin E because that is going to help to preserve this. I absolutely did not measure that. I keep forgetting. <laughs> um, and for these oils, I'll start to use my little dropper. So. Let's stick with the basics for now, which would be lavender. This one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, that might have been eleven. Let's 
cedar wood. You gotta watch it with cedar wood. The last, my last bottle of this actually went bad, so I'll just put in like a five of those. It turned black in the jar. I'm like, oh wow! I never actually saw any oils go bad before. Uh, am I covering the jar completely with these bottles here? I probably am. Neem oil. Um, actually, my supervisor, she's going bald. I feel so bad for her, but. Uh, she had actually done the research for neem oil and she was like supposed to be good for hair and somebody told her to you know massage her scalp with it. I don't think it worked but nevertheless. Alright that was about seven drops. Okay probably ten when I just did that last squirt because the last squirt kind of seemed like it had a lot in it. And I'll do some rosemary. So the rosemary probably the cedar wood. I'm going to use it the other dropper. Um, probably, oh, they have antibacterial uh, properties as well, so that's also going to help to ensure that this does not go bad. All right. And I'll do a little tea tree just to be on the safer side. It also has antibacterial properties. But I won't do a lot because it doesn't smell that good and I've already got the rosemary that doesn't smell all that hot either. So I'm going to try to move some of these things out of the way and here is my butter in there and it looks like I got a lot of oil so what I'm going to do is go ahead and chunk, add a couple of more chunk and a half <laughs> uh, in there. That might, I'm wondering if it's going to be too much. Well it's going to get beaten down so whatever. If it's a little too much for her, then I'll just keep some for me. Now this is the exciting part usually because if I had been making this batch for myself, I would scent it up. And I bought these fragrance oils. Now fragrance oils are not natural. They are synthetically made because they have to have a very concentrated scent in order for them to be able to scent products. But I bought these of uh, Honeydew melon, peaches and cream, black cherry, apple butter, caramel, and warm vanilla sugar. And I scent almost everything that I make for my hair with one of these. But since this isn't for me and since this lady was sick, I don't want to do anything synthetic for her. So what we're going to be adding to scent it up a little bit is a little bit of sweet orange oil. And this stuff smells delightful as well, so. Be good for the skin and just help to make it smell, uh, you know, nice for her. So, what we'll do now is take this mixer. And I'm going to blend it. At this point, if I was going to heat it, I would go on ahead and heat it. I never heat in the microwave. I'm not going to try to get any radiation into my shea butter. I always uh, do it kind of in a double boiler. But I'm going to be skipping that because I feel that it may uh, dampen the intensity of the shea butter. So I'm going to go on ahead and push this down through it and get to beat it. So you see that's nice and fluffy. Let's see if I can get this out of here. <laughs> All right, nice and fluffy, and oh, doesn't it look just like cake batter when you were little and you're all begging to do that uh, to lick on these <laughs> little things? I did go back in and I uh, I got the little bits of shea butter from the bottom of the jar that Warren blended in and brought those to the top so that they could get blended and I just want you to see how nice and fluffy this is. That is awesome. Kind of like a really soft cake batter or like even like a whipped 
like a souffle. It's just it's very light and airy. I love it. Um, I also went back in and I used the fragrance oil, the peaches and cream. So it smells nice and, and warm and peachy. So that's a really great summer scent. Uh, I just didn't like the way that it was smelling and I don't want the smell of it to turn her off. So I want the smell to be inviting so that she will go on ahead and use it. So I'll wipe my hands off instead of, I'm very cheap guys. So I would, I would, if this wasn't on camera, I would try to save every drop of everything that fell on anything. I would be picking it up because I am not a waster and maybe try to get some of those air bubbles out. Now, because it is so fluffy and it's been whipped, it has a lot of air in it. So it may be a little bit more dense once it settles, but for now, here is, <laughs> here is our product. Nice and packaged. It smells so nice. I feel like trading with her for the cherry that I made for myself. Hmm. Nah, I'll keep this batch for her. If you don't want it to be coming so close to the top when you're doing it, you can just use a bigger bowl and then transfer it into whatever uh, storage container you're gonna put it into. But for me, this is a done deal. I did not heat it. I don't feel the need to really heat it anymore just because right after you heat it and melt it, you try to get it cold so you can solidify it again. So I'll just leave it solid and beat it and whip it into soft submission. And it is whipped and light and fluffy just the way I like it. I cannot wait to talk to you guys again. Bye.